in your role as CEO of OnSend, you have over the, last, over the years developed some principles and values which guide your decision making. Would you mind sharing with us your most important ones? Uh, you know, the list can be as long as as short as you want, but I think it always comes back to, to a few which are really fundamental, right? For me, number one, it's really always if you have to have a clear vision and purpose. If you don't have a clear vision and purpose, then it's really hard to articulate what do you want to do? Why do you want to do this? Why do you go through the hardship of, for example, business transformation on to bring a company from here to there. I want us to benefit, you know, at the end of that, of that tunnel. And why is that motivated? That's number one. Number two, I'd say adaptability and resiliency, right? If you don't have that, you're not gonna, you're not gonna enjoy lasting success. No plan will ever materialize the way it was set out in the outset. Things will always go wrong or sideways or not quite as anticipated. And so to have this adaptability and resiliency as a, as a core value in your approach is key. But then there's also all these kind of two other elements maybe to add. One is more like a hardwired, if you want to call it, principle of value. And the other one maybe you are a software. The hardwired one, and I was speaking as a baby boomer here, right? Younger people might see this differently, but I am a hard believer in hard work, in dedication to your work, in focus, in diligence, right? In follow through. Set yourself a goal and follow through. Perseverance, don't give up. Things will not go as planned. Figure out a way around it. You know, today it's all about, you know, work-life balance and all this kind of thing. It's fine, but if you if you have an ambitious goal and you want to achieve it, then you have to put the hard work in to get there, whether it's six hours a day, eight hours a day, or 16 hours a day. And this is about have a plan, have a goal, prioritization, follow through. I mean, in the good old P&G days, we had this OGSM model, objectives, goals, strategies, and measures, where you really spelled out very, very clearly what are you trying to achieve, how you're going to achieve it, how you're going to measure success. And so I think this discipline in thinking and in your approach, I think that's really key. That's the hardware measure. The software measure always is all about people. Every, every business today, regardless of what you do, uh, is a data-driven business and it's a people business. Without the people, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere. And so that soft wired factor is all about, you know, empathy and, and, and trust and collaboration. We're human beings and that gets us to this fierce human, which I proudly admit I stole from you guys, right? Because put the human in the middle, whether it's your employees or whether it's your customers or whether it's your partners in your supply chain or ever, you always got to put the human in the middle. And, and for that, you need those soft wired principles and values, which I mentioned, empathy and trust and transparency and honesty and, and ethics. I was wondering if we look at your four values, principles that you shared with us, has anything changed over the last 20 or 30 years for you in terms of uh, ranking or in terms of importance of these values? But human beings and things, you know, really evolved. Like, like an organization, an organization is also an organism which has to grow and evolve over time. Otherwise, it's going to die the same with us. So, so of course, it has evolved. Whether the polarization has changed, I'm not really sure. But I look at, I look at leadership like it's pretty similar to like a good cheese or. Or, or, or a beautiful red wine. It ripens over time. So as a, as a person, you grow, you make experiences, you make mistakes. You learn from these mistakes, you get a tremendous amount of feedback, voluntarily and involuntarily. And sometimes you might not even like it. Sometimes you might not even want it, but you get it anyway and it penetrates. And so over time, you as a leader, obviously you, you, you evolve. And so I think for me, you know, being that alpha animal, goal-driven, determined, never give up kind of bulldog. I think for me, the biggest shift was to let myself go, to take myself less serious, to really, you know, be able to step back and, and put all the effort in to, to try to understand others and other points of views before you push your own opinion on the thing. And that was very hard for me in the beginning of my career. And I think today it works well for me that I can take myself back and take myself less serious and know 
that I will be so much more successful by elevating the ideas of thoughts and questions which come to the interaction with your team, the people with you and around you and so forth. I think that's key. And then the other thing, so you today you have meeting after meeting, call after call in the eight hours or so you're in the office and not everything goes as planned. And so you, you're frustrated, uh, your anger, uh, you know, someone really pissed you off or whatever. And then you go in the next meeting and you carry this over to the next meeting and that's wrong. Because then you put yourself, you know, you put the people you're working with in the second meeting, already you're, you're treating them unfairly because you bring your baggage over, right? So clean slate really is, you know, take a deep breath, step back, put this in a compartment, deal with it later, no issue, no, no, no decisions, to be, different decisions to be taken, different projects to be work on clean slate. I think that's really important. And I think these are the things you learn over time. How, how you deal with that um, versus in the beginning of the career where you might be, you know, not a super friend, if that's the right word, you know, you know, to deal with your emotions in a way that you don't get in the effect of you being effective and productive and working with your teams on specific issues, if that makes sense. Is there anything that you can recommend to people out there what they should do first when it comes to implement more human centricity in their daily work? You know, I, I like your, and I, again, I want to give you credit to the fiercest human. That's really something you guys created. And I, I, I always like the philosophy of stealing and improving things, right? So I took it. Yeah, I would say fiercest human is the, is the uh, complete opposite to fiercely corporate. You don't want to be fiercely corporate. So you want the human in the middle, right? We have goals, we have dreams, we have ambition. We want to learn, we want to be rewarded. We, we want to, we want to know and see and feel and hear what the impact is we're making for uh, on the bigger picture. So there's really no magic around it being humor and I'll share the humor and of running, you know, a business with that with that mindset in mind. Now granted, you know, I, I used I used to be in charge of three thousand team members and fifteen factories and forty sites across the world. It's 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 easier today in a mid market company where we have a hundred associates are on the payroll, but it shouldn't preclude you also in a bigger environment to, to try to be fiercely human. What does it mean? It, number one, you're aware of yourself and how you, you know, how others perceive you. If you don't have strong self-awareness of how you're perceived by others, then it's really hard to be authentic, right? It's really hard to build you know, that trust. But then there are little things you can do. So the first thing I do every morning, I walk the floors, right? I go to every single desk, say, hey, how are you doing? What's happening? Do you need help in anything? Or do you maybe just have a coffee? Being part of that that community, contributing, mm -hmm. I think that's key. And then obviously doors always open, people know they can come, you know, whatever. If I have no comes on the phone call now, so I see you in five minutes and I go back, I wouldn't see them. And if I, it's just easy things like that, so that people feel, you know, they appreciate it, number one, but they also know, comes back to my initial principle, right? The, the vision and the purpose, they know what we're trying to achieve, why we're trying to achieve this, why is this rewarding and how are they contributing, right? And it's really little things like that, I think, which may make a difference.